Inspire. 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 Inspire Radio. Passionate Lives. For the community. Inspire Radio. And welcome back to IPL Radio. I should say Inspire, it's IPL Radio. That's this right. is Decca and Tris. And we're continuing the um, the theme uh, for Mental Health Week. We've just had uh, Brian from Headspace. We're talking about kind of general depression and anxiety. Um, and now we're joined by Mark Cousins. Um, and before we kick off the interview, I just want to let people know, they're listening or watching on YouTube, that we are going to be talking about a very sensitive subject. Um, so we're going to be talking about some... Um, elements of suicide and so if you have experience lived experience or you know it's this is a trigger for you um, then just look after your your mental health while you watch this or listen to this interview um mark so this isn't the first time you've been with us um so you did an interview last year talking about chalk for mental health um so just for the people that don't know um can you just share a little bit about your journey Yep, uh, thanks for having us uh, guys and uh, second year in a row, really appreciate it and good to see Rockingham uh, community group getting behind a uh, community thing, so I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, uh, a couple of years ago we lost our son uh, to suicide, so we just uh, tried to find some meaning or how we're going to cope with things and one day we're, I was sitting on the balcony with my wife and she saw a article on an ABC website about this um, husband and wife that had same thing had happened to them and uh, what they got was a thing called chalk about mental health where they provided um, the community members with some chalk uh, went down to an area that was um, near and dear to them and people were asked to create some images or some words on the footpath that expressed um, how they were feeling about their own mental health or others and just try and offer some support and um, it, it we what my wife read that and she said, what do you reckon? I said, you know what, we need to do something. We just really needed to um, feel like we were going to do something positive for, for um, at that stage. Mm-hmm. And we just thought, yeah, we'll do it. And it was only probably, I think it was about seven or eight weeks after we'd lost Brody. So um, the first one was mainly um, family and friends that came down and um, got behind it, which was amazing. It really was. It was um, gave us a lot of strength. And last year when we came down, I, I, I think it was about half family and friends and half community members, which was really special. It was really so good. complete strangers, complete strangers having um, conversations. Some people wanted to talk, other people didn't, and that's totally understand that, respect yeah. that. Um, but regardless, all those images or those words were left on the footpath for over a week for people to have a look at. So it was mm. amazing. Yeah, that's an awesome effort from people. That yeah, it was. It was really special. Just to show, it goes to show you, there's definitely support out there, isn't there, for that? Oh yeah, and, and you can, um, you can feel it there at the time. It's you know when you, uh, you see people that are getting around people who are obviously having a hard time. Yeah, you, someone mm-hmm. might have been doing something which was really deeply personal to them, and they might have been wanting to be left alone. But after, you saw some people get up and get around that those people and make sure they're okay, which is really good that's yeah. really touching isn't it and oh. it's unfortunately it's one of those things where this kind of thing brings people together and the community especially rockingham quinana kind of area there's so many community-minded people that just want to get behind each other and keep each other safe and definitely you know. i think and i uh, think and what i really hope uh from this because my wife and i we have discussions we think well how are we going to stop it you know and, and you do sometimes you just feel overwhelmed mm. you think how it's just so tragic and you, you we're on support groups in this every day there's a new family coming in and it does get overwhelmed but the idea of of what it is is that people who will be walking down that footpath potentially really in a dark place and see that and they go do you know what there are people that care about us mm. and sometimes 15 20 minutes later from that darkest thought you're okay yeah and it's just a matter of holding on um and reaching out for help and it is so hard at times to go and take that first step and get help but once you've done it you know what the amount of people that get around you who you didn't even think would be understanding is incredible you know and it's not doesn't have to be always uh you know like you you 
I know it's really hard to get professional help sometimes straight away when you need it, but you know what? If your friends and your family know they're all, they're going to be there yeah, and they're going to be with and you the whole way. I've always felt like with suicide, <coughs> if there was just one percent of hope, that could be enough yeah. to, to deter someone, wasn't it? Just that message, and, and there was a, a girl I think in the UK that wrote lots of messages of hope and 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 put them on like different bridges and stuff. Mm. So if someone was there with that intent and they saw this message saying don't give up you know i'm here for like i'm a random stranger yeah. um that the hope was that you know they wouldn't then do it and that's all it takes isn't it just one person actually caring yep. and doing something like what you're doing yeah um i think it's huge yeah and and i know i know i think the um you know like people say oh you know i don't know how you do it what's happened how do you do it and all that but for us um the person that who will potentially see those words or those pictures and takes a first step to get help. They're the brave people. Yeah. You know, I, I, even if we don't know who that person is, just so we would be so grateful if that person can reach out, get help and their family has the blessing of having them in their life for a long time. That's, and that's there a is goal. a lot of help out there, isn't there? I mean, we've got the lifeline, we've got suicidal callback line, there's the kids helpline um, and we'll post all those phone numbers. <coughs> when we post this later on but yeah. it's just that act of accept and acknowledging there's a problem or acknowledging there's a problem that you need to do something about and then yeah. reaching out and doing something about it yeah and and you know like i there's there's a word that i hate and it's stigma because we say you've got to break the stigma but i i think using the word stigma actually like stigmatizing it, it, yeah it it doesn't help because you know what like i, I suffer with um you know, in and out of, you know, mental health issues myself. And I don't understand it. But then again, if I was a diabetic, I, would, I don't understand that either. Mm. So why is it, why do I have to be embarrassed, which I was for a long time and never told anyone about what my medical issues are? And it, it, you shouldn't have to feel that way. And you don't have to tell the world if you don't want to. I totally understand that too. Mm. But at the same time, I don't feel embarrassed by um you know like the, the medical issue i have it and i know that i can you know like treat it and look after myself and my family and friends look after me and everything else so it's good and i think that i mean pre-covid that the expert research was that one in five people have a mental health issue um, post-covid that's just blown out of the water so it's not like you're the only one that's experiencing that so many people now are experiencing some form yeah, of mental health issue. Yeah, and what do they say? A problem shared is a problem halved. I think it's even more than that. Like it's helped mm. me a lot, so for sure. And and I'm happy to talk to people when they come up and talk to me. And yeah, I think it's really good. And to be able to talk to someone who's honest about how they feel as well actually yeah. makes you feel normal. You think, you know what? <laughs> I'm not the only one. Yeah. I think most of the people at the station have got some form of mental health issue, haven't they? Oh, I think so. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, that's just what bonds us i think what keeps us going is that we all have some kind of disadvantage yeah and yeah uh, we turned it into a positive yep. yeah that's it it's uh you do something that you love it's uh it certainly helps regardless whatever you do yeah, yeah whether it be could be sports could be like the same with brian before music that helps a lot of people as well and uh well myself i like to do this so <laughs> this, is, this is what i do yeah it keeps me sort of sane as i say and then uh i just replay it back in the car and i say i've got three hours of me and that's my historic moment that's my mark on this earth that's what i want so that's good yeah yeah that's just just one of the one of the sort of cures i find i can do um uh, like you say that that artwork on the sidewalk that is uh that's a really good idea i've heard of that quite a few times and i've actually done that with my daughter not particular for the cause or anything but it's a good idea to get your message across mm. because chalk runs away in the in the rain in the wet weather it's nothing permanent so you don't get sort of blasted for graffiti or anything <laughs> like that you know and you, it's a way to express how you feel with people and if, if you can't draw pictures write words yeah. like the words uh faith hope and charity were the most sort of biblical type of words that people had and people used to uh stitch these things uh what do you call them you know the stitch work the patchwork faith hope and charity yeah tapestry oh, yeah. all mm. that yeah Yep. And they used to put that in little things and have it built into a cushion or something. You know, the old grandmas used to do that. And <laughs> they used to put uh, just cushions of faith. And then on come the inspirational words that people have got decorated on house walls now. Have you seen them ones? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're a good idea. But they're more permanent. And I think that's, 
like, like an offcast of the chalk on the sidewalk. Yeah, well, did you remember um, initially with COVID that p- the people were encouraging the, the teddy bears in the window and all that, but also to, to um, the chalk rainbows on the um, mm. on your oh, driveway? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, so our, our children got into that and, you know, like I think that it's really good for our children, the, the chalk event too, because they can write down something um, about their brother, Brody, and or something that they remember him doing, like... Um, our youngest boy, he started surfing. Brody had a, uh, a love of surfing and boogie boarding, and, and our daughter does too. And they both love, well, all the kids love their sport, and Brody loves sport too, and skateboarding. It's just, it's good to um, see them doing it. And then we can talk about times that Brody had doing that. And we, it's really important for us to keep Brody's memory alive. Mm. Um, and to talk about him because he obviously he's a massive part of our life still and um, we, and for the kids as well and for them, I mean, at times we get really upset when we think about Brody, and um, you can see that they maybe don't want to talk about things sometimes because they think they're going to upset us but to be able to do it in a, in a nice way like when they're doing sport or... Thinking yeah, about the good memories. A, yeah, it's a really positive way for us to have a conversation about Brody and how, how much we loved him and how important he is to us, you know? Yeah. And I think, I mean, I, I don't know about your kind of views on, on other stuff, but I think that they're still around with us. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, he'll be watching, very proud of his dad for, for doing what you, and his mum, obviously, for yeah. doing what you're doing. It's act- I'm actually Brody's stepfather, and um, I, was, mm-hmm. I, I was lucky enough to meet um, Brody when he turned four. Oh, okay. And um, uh, really, one of the, uh, something that's come out of uh, w- the tragedy of Brody passing is um, we've become really good friends with um, Brody's father, which has been very special because uh, <coughs> when you go through that sort of thing, sometimes being able to talk to someone else that understands and there's no right or wrong thing to say and if you break down and cry or whatever... Mm. Like, you just understand it, yeah. So that's been a really, um, almost really kind helpful of like brotherly thing. kind of thing. Yeah, it's got been that very thing. helpful mm-hmm. for um for us, you know. So yeah, it's just um, and um, my wife actually said that that's what Brody would have wanted mm. as well, which is really special. And I think that that that's something that we all take um, heart from, you know, brings yeah. brings a bit of comfort from. Absolutely, with the chalk for mental health, um, you mentioned that. You've changed the date. Yes. So when's when's uh, the actual date? It's on uh, Sunday, the seventh of um, November. And last year we we started at ten a.m. This year we're starting at nine a.m. And we're actually limiting it to four hours. Now that's not because we don't want um, it to go all day. We leave the chalk out, and people are welcome to grab it um, whenever they want. But we just felt that um, if we have a time timeline on it, that hopefully we'll be able to get people like to come together at like a little bit closer time frame so we can so have, it have went those four day before then did it yeah it pretty much kept going and going and and we, that was a bit of an afterthought we didn't put a time <laughs> stuff on it and this year we're hoping um what our plan is is to uh run a bit of a, a sausage sizzle uh to raise some funds we don't it's not about mo- money f- for us um mm. so it's going to be like two dollars for a sausage sizzle and a and a uh, you know a dollar for a drink or something, but people have said if you've got a charity in mind, um, and um, speaking about it with my wife this year says, or oh, maybe we should do something. So um, we've de- we've decided to um, select Lifeline, um, and we've actually asked them to come down because uh, I know you're involved with the Mind the Walk last weekend, yeah. and uh, they were really good. They came down to that, and they said that a number of people came up and actually just were ready to have that discussion about where they were at and wanting help. And the beauty of, of talk about mental health is, is it's, a, um, it's a really supportive environment, but none of us that are there are experts on helping someone, but to actually potentially have someone there that is an expert and can guide the people if they're ready, then that's a really, That'd be awesome. that's a really positive thing that we thought we could add to this year. Yeah. And all the money will just go straight to them if we get some, you know. So but like I said, they be there to like do a talk or something like that. No, or? I think they're just they're just there as a presence. Yeah. So if someone want, they can, I mean, I hope they just walk through the people doing their creations, and or and they'll, they'll obviously they'll have a because it's actually starting at our house, which is in um, 
uh, six Penguin Road, which is if anyone knows the um, where the ferries leave from to go to Penguin Island, oh, okay, it's basically the corner of Gloucester Street and Penguin Road. So yep. it's right there. And what we want to do is head from our house down to the footpaths where the um, where the Great Wall's being built there to stop the uh, w- the Rockingham getting washed away in the storms. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, the, yeah. the Rock Wall. Uh, so basically, we want to head along those footpaths because that's a really busy footpath, and we get a lot of tourists come down. Yeah. So people, not just from Rockingham, but from wherever, can see that, and hopefully, um, you know, like enjoy the message and get take something from it. So that all along there is going to be the like the canvas, is it? Yep, that's the canvas. That's what we want. That's our goal to get as much of that done as we can. Yeah. But like I said, uh, it's not about quantity, it's about quality. So we hope to have as many people turn up as possible. We're going to supply all the chalk, so all you have to do is bring your ideas um, and come down and be part of it. If you don't want to um, talk to people, that's fine, but if you do, you know, you're know you welcome to talk, but just share your, your, your um, thoughts through your um, chalk creations on the footpath. That's what we'd love. It sounds like a good do. idea, that. So that is, I think I've caught the right times in that. That's Sunday the 7th of November. Yes. And it's at 9 a.m. And it starts around the number six Penguin Road. Yes. Towards Safety Bay, is that right? Um, yeah, well, we're going to head direction. down toward, we're going to head uh, west to basically the Penguin Island Cafe. Yep. And then we'd like to turn, uh, I, I think, we, we, we normally went south from there, but because of the rock walls and uh, that's actually getting built at the moment, yeah. I don't know if that's going to be finished or not. So we might have to turn uh, right and head north back through the basically the Penguin Island Cafe car park along the footpaths there, which would be f- perfect as well because we get um, the, all the tourists and that. You could walk down there as well. Isn't yeah, it? it's, yeah, it's nice. It's a good little tourist spot regardless, and plenty of people walk and jog and cycle along there anyway. So, it's, yeah. yeah, it's a good Good it little is. area. Yeah, so like I said, we're going to supply all the chalk and um, just come down. It's not uh, – there's there's no cost or anything. The only thing, if you wanted to buy a sausage and, and a roll or whatever, that's that's fine. That would be great. And you've got sausages all on, have you? We're going we're gonna to put one on. Um, last year we um, had some had an offer of um, a donation from one of the local butchers for some sausages, but we didn't take them up on it because we weren't really sure of how we were going to go with it and um, – uh, you know, like we, we wanted to be part of just going out there and, and seeing the creations and yeah. stuff. But um, this year we're going to yeah, put the sausage sizzle on because any little bit helps. And yeah. you know what? Someone's got to come and talk It's an Australian, like, thing, isn't it? You know? That's yeah. right. Someone's got to come and talk to you for a sausage, don't yeah. you? So that's that's good. So That's yeah. really cool. Yeah, no, it will be. It'll be good. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to try and be there. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. It's a Sunday, isn't it? Yes, Sunday, Sunday the seventh of November at nine a.m. and finishes at one p.m. But we leave we leave the chalk out the front of our house. So if people come late for work or sport or whatever, they're welcome to grab some chalk and go and um, create whatever they feel that they wanted to and share with everyone. Awesome. Yeah. What's the feedback you've had from doing this? Um, you know, it's we've had some really positive feedback. And, and I just want to touch on something that you mentioned at the start of this thing about a trigger warning. And it's mm. something that um, I'd never really thought of. And last year we had some people that were really keen to attend. And then they sent through a message basically apologising, saying, look, they were really triggered by what was going to happen. And, and I had never really thought of it because for us it was just trying to like be a hope thing. But yeah, And I understand... Uh, anxiety and stuff like that and we get a bit wound up about you know like, is it weather going to be nice for it and all mm. that sort of thing totally different to how these people are feeling but i understand that so that's maybe why this year we've asked life hopefully going to get lifeline or someone like that to come down because if even if at the time you think you're fine if part of the way through it's, you just something happens and you need a little bit of support I, I, th- I think any kind of talk about suicide if you've got lived experience can be a trigger yeah. and, and you might like i, I do mental health training and there are people who like they can you can see them hold themselves together but then something happens and they you know they just go into a crisis because it just it's just too triggering for them mm. um and that's i think it's why important why we do trigger warnings why we talk we let people know in advance that we're going to talk about this because it can be so emotive yeah that when you lose someone um having this conversation listening to a conversation about this can be really really hard yeah but i think that do we not talk about it for fear of triggering people 
or do we try and have a conversation around the hope like yeah. you're doing? Yeah. And I, I think for me, um, I think you've got to, you've got to be try and say, you've got to be as safe as you can. But I think that we still need, it's, it's, it's a very difficult conversation, but I think it's the one we have to have. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and I suppose, I don't know, I, I, we, we, you know, like we, my wife and I, we talk about what is the solution to this? And I'm not sure, you know, it's interesting. Um, I look at when I went to school and we were taught about equal opportunities and, and, you know, like as silly as it sounds now, you know, like racism and women are equal to men and they should mm. have the same opportunities and why can't a woman be a boss or why can't a person of whatever race be a boss or anything like that and it just seems so silly now that we had to have that conversation mm. because it is that's true it's normal you know same as with um you know g- um gay rights and all that sort of stuff it's it's just a fact of life so i don't know whether maybe by having these conversations about mental health now it's not so much for our generation that's maybe it's miss the opportunity it's for our children yeah and and i know that when my wife and i when we have uh talks and you know some it's scary we get scared you know like because you wonder about you know like our other children mm. and my hope whether it's right or wrong is that by bringing it out in the open and just making it an everyday conversation the same as like why haven't you done your homework Mm. or whatever clean your room yeah it's just a normal part of life and it is so let's just try and make it a normal part of life and maybe by doing that these words like taboo stigma and all that it's a thing of the past yeah you know i don't know that's that's my hope i don't know whether that's just naive or just trying to cling on to something positive but I, I, you got to believe in something and that's what i really really hope and, and i think the same i think that you know sexism um in the 40s 50s and 60s was very different to what it is now um because people have had that conversation and then each generation um takes up the thing and 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 fights again get more ground so you know while people in the 60s um talking about anything to do with mental health was taboo Mm. now we're in a better position but i think the next generation will will take up the sword and 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 hopefully maybe even their their generation or their kids generation there will be an end to, to, to this embarrassment or this stigma and we'll just be able to have a conversation about mental health or suicide um, without without fear. Yeah, definitely. And you know what? And if people, that's that's basically what those pictures and those images represent. It's just the, <coughs> you don't have to say it. You can just write it or draw it. And that's mm. the beauty of the freedom of what, um, I mean, I love looking at artists. It amazes me how they do things. I cannot in my mind work out how they get things in proportion same as a musician it's amazing (laughs) but i just love looking at it yeah and it gives me like strength and happiness and and even if i can't create it and i'm thinking there's probably a lot of people that can't either they'll walk down there and they'll see that and i'll bring them happiness and strength too and that's yeah it's an incredible thing and it's just like you can just be in your own little world create something and you've got no idea how much of a positive impact that could potentially have on someone's life you know and it's that's a wonderful thing yeah that sounds really really cool place to end the interview there i reckon yeah yeah definitely um just just to go over the details um chalk for mental health sunday the 7th of november starts at nine o'clock at six penguin road safety bay um and then moving westwards did you say yeah we're going to head west down towards the um foreshore um foot footpaths which is basically where pengo's cafe is yeah and then depending on um how the uh works the road works there are going for the uh, rock wall we'll either head south or north or both ways which is fine yeah so it's yeah. actually if people want to have a look on facebook we've created the event and it's called chalk about mental health yeah um and it's uh, you look that up and, I, and I've made it public. I believe you can find it. Some people can, some people can't. I'm hopeless at it, so I don't know well, how we'll, to we'll do it. We'll post a link um, in the Facebook and the YouTube, so people can just click the link and it'll take them. Oh, wow. There. That's awesome. Thank you very Beauty much. Beauty of social media. Yeah. you just got to <laughs> know how to use it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Alrighty. Well, thanks for coming in and that. And, uh, yeah, it's been a very interesting, eye-opening talk. And, uh, yeah, we'll, hopefully we'll see lots of people down there on Sunday.